I'm either gonna have all the fun in the world with this or I'm going to wish that I had never done this video. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Amy here, back again with another video. Tomorrow is the release day of my debut novel, Aster's Coda Exposure. Get it now, down in the description, available for pre-order, and it'll be distributed to you tomorrow. This is so exciting. But on a different note, it's an understatement to say that my novel has changed a lot. Uh, since its conception, and uh, I'm gonna take you back to good old 2014. Probably at the latest. It might have been earlier. This is probably the th first, somewhere between the first and the third draft that I did for the initial version of Aster's Coda back in late into media, early high school, when I had no hell of an idea of what actually writing a novel had to look like. I pulled the files off of my teeny tiny laptop that was probably no bigger than an A5 piece of paper. And I put them onto my regular laptop here, the one that I use now and is way better. And we're gonna be reading some snippets. I absolutely hate reading my old writing. I've got a couple of videos of it. I'll pop those up in the cards for you now. And uh, yeah, it's not nice. On the bright side, the only way was up. My actual novel is much better. Uh, I'm just prolonging the inevitable. Let's just get started. We're gonna start off with the prologue. Let's see how bearable this actually is. Fate, destiny, curses. Things like these have ruled the lives of many, no matter how important they are in any world. I think that's just a sign of me trying to be edgy and really fantasy-ish. But Faye has been particularly labelled for all the heroes in the world. Yep, paragraph two definitely confirms that. Harry Potter's lightning scar was a turning point from average into hero. A prophecy is given to Percy Jackson were cryptic fate setters which made him dive into the battles and tragedies awaiting his life. Curses, particularly through bloodlines, have made the people have a huge weight on their shoulders that would cause chaos without them. What are you doing, Amy? The curse, particularly through family bloodlines. I am one of them. That's not even a full sentence. Ugh. There was a curse of my bloodline and I was selected to be the ender of it. The weavers of destiny must have chosen the wrong person. Maybe they were drunk or high as they were reaving cloth of history and totally decided to make a depiction of a ginger teenage girl in a battle where she clearly had a disadvantage. Okay, I see the metaphor I was going for there, but I did it like really, really poorly. Fate at the tapestry and this one particular thread being just a little bit too short or something. Trust me, I'm a better writer than this. I'm Abby Tonks, and this is my extremely complicated story. One, I did not know how to do last names. I literally stole that last name off of Harry Potter. Her actual last name now is Tacker. Two, this is not an extremely complicated story. Literally, like, nothing happens for the first 10 chapters except for teenage drama filler. She does not have a character arc in this version. It is ballistic. I was born and raised in Marloton. Oh my gosh, yeah. I forgot that when I initially made this, I made up a fictional place in New Zealand, but then I just decided I wanted to have more connections to the world and stuff like that, so I decided to go with Rotorua. I've got a blog post on that, actually, about why I chose Rotorua as the setting for my novel. Da -da 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 -da. But you probably want to know about the people around here now, won't you? Oh no. There is literally a paragraph dedicated to each character in her high school and in her life. Oh my god. Oh, and it's describing them all so badly. Like, uh, let's see, let's see. My dad, Logan, is a racing fan. No. You totally removed that fact. I think I was just trying to copy my dad, but with Formula One instead of V8 supercars. My brother Rocco was considered unemployed. So it's surprising for his age. 20 year olds would at least have a part-time job these days. Okay, I changed that as well. And now there's this whole section about how she love-hated being a nerd. She's, I did, ugh. I am so glad I got rid of that. I was so, so try hard. Ugh, I am a nerd, ugh. But it's actually kind of cool. I was trying to be subversive and I have no idea how to write subversion. That's actually a good video idea, how to subvert tropes. Yep, and there's an entire paragraph about uh, 
me hating maths, or Abby hating maths, I, I also wasn't fond of it. Patience, oh, I forgot about patience. I totally got rid of her. Oh, and Marcus as well. Marcus was gonna be like a love triangle love interest. So glad I did not decide to do that trope thing. And last thing is welcome to the story of how I disappointed Destiny. You disappointed the art of writing a novel, Abby Tonks. God, it, it sounds so ugh, guttural. Let's see how chapter one fares. Ugh. Already terribly. Starting off with waking up to an alarm. Yep, and an entire page spent describing how to get ready. Looking at the bunny rabbit nighty. Thought of the first day of school agony that awaited me. Got off my cozy bed. Looked at myself in the mirror. Oh no! No! I... <laughs> I use mirrors way better because I use the mirrors at certain points not the start of the novel in my novel to describe how Abby has changed and it's used as kind of like a symbol for how she sees and perceives herself. Oh god and her dad called her a pumpkin just because she has orange hair? That's disgusting. I would slap my dad if he did that. Oh my god the Labrador Pepsi. I forgot that Abby had a dog. I thought it was so edgy naming a dog Pepsi. Well, not edgy, but like adorable. I think in like a later book, I actually made Pepsi talk. Like he was Salem from Sabrina. A paragraph dedicated to describing what happens in each class at school. Oh, until their English class. She writes an entire piece of flash fiction describing how her mum died on holiday. Did this version of the school even know that her Mum had died? Ugh. 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 Big oof. The first 10 chapters of the book didn't have any actual plot. So now we're going to go to chapter 10 where something actually happens. Oh boy, the, the ch chapter title. Eeh. Steam and Sea and Strangers and Smash. I swear, I title my chapters way better than my book. Oh wait, she's going on a date with Marcus? Oh no, it's a friendly beach trip, not a date. Yep, yeah, she didn't develop feelings until the start of book two spontaneously. Trees chattered along with a light breeze. Okay, that's not bad, but not good either. Uh, paragraph explaining her shower. Paragraph explaining her outfit choices. And apparently her dog barks at barks at a shirt that she's got a cat on it. Ugh. Started two sentences in a row with, I turned. Don't do that. Oh boy, I just put details in all wrong places. And of course she goes late because every quirky girl has to be late and clumsy. Every fat and bent, ugh. <laughs> I severely don't like what I've written now. Severely. Okay, there's an entire paragraph describing the beach. I saw a flock of seagulls flying. They spotted some fish and chips that a couple was eating and flew down. The rest of the flock followed suit. They slowly waddled over to the couple and I swear they had the minor look on their faces. They tried to swap them away from the food and oh boy, I did not know how to show nouns in that sentence. I smelt the salt in the air. Weirdly, it was my favorite smell. The smell of summer, the good days. Those days when independence and no school ruled my life. Ugh. I felt a chill on my toes as I walked into the water. My favorite sensation, the wetness and the coldness, like two surprises in one. It was why I didn't scream as loud when Fauna, Hillary, and I did the ice bucket challenge. Ugh. I, I must have written this in my last year of intermediate. That was when the ice bucket challenge was a big thing. I refused to do that. I thought these girls would have enjoyed it. I don't think Abby actually would have enjoyed it. Da da da. Moving on. Oh boy, the action is just an entire page and a half describing just the dude grabbing her hand and pulling her along and her losing her glasses and then she went all Velma. There's an entire paragraph here. I turned to where the sand had come from and I knew that man had stepped on my glasses, my only pair. Far out. My only source of getting around the place. Gone. I was now defenseless with only colors and light to guide me around the place. Oh my god. No. Ugh. Please. I know that my release day for my book is tomorrow. And I know that writing was god awful. Look at me. This is a face of disgust. Promise that this is better. I had a much more sensational video of just the prologue alone. And that prologue still gives me chills. 
More chills than that. That just gives me like, <clears throat> I mean, yeah. Please, this book is better. Please buy it. Please come to the release day live stream tomorrow happening at 12 p.m. New Zealand time or 5 p.m. Pacific on the previous day. It's gonna be an hour of Aster's Code of Fun. It's gonna be great. Please come. Sadly, I won't be reading any more of my old writing because yeah, I don't wanna see that again. No, I'm not doing another video on this, no. Please, no! If you enjoyed this video, unlike me, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you are new around here. Ring that bell so you can find out when I post more creative content. And you can also check me down below for my Instagram, my Twitter, and my website. Stay creative, everybody, and I'll be seeing you in tomorrow's live stream.